Hi, Mark Savage here and welcome to my channel. Bit of a windy day. What are we looking at today? Toyota's MR2 Mark II. There was three Mark I way back in 1984 to 1989. I had one, a little boxy. The Mark II came out in 94 onwards, about 1999. And these are nice little motors. I've always liked this particular one. I'll tell you why. Because it always reminded me of a Ferrari. And there was a kit that you could put on. Don't suggest you do that. But there was a kit you could put on these motors. Now, the Mark III came out, 1999 to 2007, and that was the last of these production motors. They are nice. Some did try and spin out and kill you. That's always been a little bit of a problem with these cars. They do keep you awake. But that's what you like about these cars. The, the feeling, the enjoyment of them. That was hard to say. Whose is this motor? It is mine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Rude>. <laughs> Some of you may remember this young man from the next Moto video where I stuck on my shoulder and walked him out. He pretends to be me. No one pretends to be me. I'm original. That's what I say. Anyway, this is his car. Hi, Mike Savage here. I bought another car. <laughs> Excuse me, it'll be a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't Bond script either, actually. <laughs> He's <No> doing well. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have a Juvenge, what's that, 1989? 1990, I'm going to Toyota MR2. In reasonably, pretty original condition, if I'm honest with you. So we're going to have a nice look around this car today, hear it, listen to it, even get a drive by as well. So, without further ado, let's open our doors up and have a look around the car. So a quick look around, and I apologise for the wind, it wasn't a curry, but you can never plan these things, can you? She is a pretty, pretty motor. These are mid-engines, we'll have a look in a second at that. Twin exhausts. And it is the T-bar version. Now there is something rare about this car, and I'm going to show you when I open the driver's door in a minute. Good healthy set of tyres on there. And obviously it doesn't have to drive with the lights up, but it does look nice with the lights up. Now it's not the dash, but it is wearing a little hat at present minute. It's an auto. Now, the fact is that there's only 21 of these on the road. I, out of all the years I remember these, didn't crash, weren't auto boxes, they're all manual boxes, and it's a sport auto as well. So let's look around the car with all the doors open. This young man here is going to open all the doors for us, and we're going to have a look at the engine, boot, and oh, all the spaces. Really <laughs> One's done. So long before remotes, there was the old fashioned way, which is. Oh, uh, tons of switches to open up something, and they always do bets with people if they can open the um, bonnet and they never find the switch for it. So they're inside, are they? Little yeah, pools. So down here you've got your back boot one. Yep. Um, and then down here you've got your normal boot release. Okay. And then hidden right down the back of the seat, you've got the one for the engine bay. Oh, there you which go. no one can ever find. I always like to say I'll give you a ten if you can find <laughs> it and they never find it. <laughs> Let's look round this and I'll get round back round to him. So we do have an underbonnet space, because obviously there's no engine in here. Battery. Pop lights, nice struts and fuse box under here. We come round. We've got a nice interior. Now I always want to say Arkansas. I don't know why, but it's probably not. But I always feel that way. You do sit a bit low. Nice centre console. A little bit of a cubby hole there. So it's got a nice stereo system in here. I do know on the Mark III, behind here there's like boot spaces. But I'm not sure about this one. Does. And I've just been told it does. <laughs> Get your boot space as well. It's nice and handy. As I alluded to earlier, nice dash. It's a nice seating position. So it's been cleaned. Nice. So it's original 2000 twin cam 16 valve engine in here. Have you enjoyed playing with this engine? What have you done? I've not enjoyed playing with it because it's ever been every swear word under the sun. But I was travelling back from South End quite a lot, there and back, never caused me a problem. Yeah. But with all the rain we've had and stuff like that, it just it kept hunting and being a bit funny. I found out that I had a leak 
on the pipe because it's split where it goes into the air box. So I fixed all of that and it did have an induction kit on it because I was being a young childish boy with all the noises. Um, lovely induction kits which we won't talk about. And you carry on. So you have to have your fun but I noticed after a week it was just hating it so the original air box went back in it with a proper panel filter in there. And then I started to notice I had um, oil weeping out on the rocker cover so that got done but to get to that you've got to take the inlet manifold off so that had to have a gasket and then I found with it all off myself with a paint tin in the hand so I just started painting it up but with all the weather it's made it a bit grotty at the minute. I'd like to moan about that but I actually do that as well and it just comes down to it the pets even the motorbikes these air induction kits these fluffy bloody sponge filters don't do it I'm all for inbox filters uh, even the Audi had recently putting a sports inbox filter brilliant you know you get your 10% whatever they say you're gonna get but induction kits just suck in too much warm air and it mess around with the choke especially on older motors no sense in doing it however it does look clean what does it sound like what does it run like it runs perfect it, I I love it, it can twitch, like you said, it can twitch out sometimes and it has had me a couple of times. But I've always managed to catch it because I knew it was coming. But the one time I didn't catch it is when I went to the petrol station, drove out the petrol station at 10 mile an hour and come out and I was facing the other way around and a woman looking at me very concernedly and giving me, you know, all the fingers and everything. But other than that, I've, I absolutely love the car because it is old. When you're on the A12 and stuff, you have to do keep it at 60, 70, you can't crack it like that. I suppose the truth of the matter is that these are not new cars. And if the truth be known, they're mid-engine. You haven't got the same facilities as you've got with the modern cars for ABS. And I mean the, ex the EPS and all the extra bits on them. These are driver's cars. So you have to be respectful of them. Yeah, I mean, this is what, this is 1990? So 22, 23 year old this year. You still get more fun out of this in a modern car. You just drive them, they're not so much fun. These are. What's the sports box like? Quite good actually. You know when you, you're clicking the buttons, like when modern cars, you put it in sport mode, you're like, yeah, they didn't feel a notice, but with this, you really do. When you've got it on as the Japanese put the box, you've got what they call menu, which is spelled wrong. And then you've got your power button, which is spelled wrong. Because <laughs> it is a proper input. Colour! <laughs> so, when you've got it in, the bull switch is off, the throttle response is not there. When you put your foot down, nothing happens. When you click your menu button, you get a bit of a better response, which I keep up with day to day driving. It's better on fuel and stuff like that. As soon as you click the power button, all hell breaks loose. You put your foot down, the back twitches out. And it really does go. When you mentioned the garage, I know what happened there. Some little bugger, a tiny bit of diesel on the floor. That's all it takes. Colder tyres, as soon as you leave the garage, the diesel then reacts on the concrete and that's when you spin air. I've seen so many people do that, so it wasn't necessarily poor driving, which we know it isn't, and it isn't all the factors. All it takes is a bit of petrol, a bit of oil, a bit of diesel on that floor, a touch these tyres because the mid-engine, the way the weight is, and that's why you span round. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. So you knew that. And when when you're not on it, it when you're not expecting it, it can you think shit, what have I done? <laughs> and that's been really truthful with these cars. They are twitchy, but that's what you like about them. And this is where you see people with these two, three, four hundred thousand pound Ferraris and Maseratis and so on, when they go to the road and they put the foot down, and they've got all this pucker technology in the world, and it will still react the same way this will. So it just proves, doesn't it, the mid-engine car. And they said that the way they weighted this was a little bit difficult. You know, they've moved them better now in the Formula One and everything else is all coming into normal car stuff today. And that's why the cars are getting so much better. But for a real enjoyable drive that keeps you alert, it's got to be an MR2. What do you reckon? Come I, would, <laughs> I would agree. I, you know, I love my MX-5s. And this feels on par with the Mark 1 MX-5. I've never had, do you know, I've never had an MX-5. I've had every other car. I love them so much, I've had too many of them. And if I had to choose, if someone put a nice Mark 1 in front of me and this, I'd choose this. Really? I would honestly choose this, because you get the luxury of everything. You get the drive and the feel of the Mark 1, but you just get the space. You get the front, you get the back, it's mid-engined. You can always have that bet with your friends and they can open the, the box.
bonnet on. <laughs> They're getting rarer and they are now becoming an appreciated motor that if you buy now, you're going to gain out of it. Well, I know that for a fact, actually, because it says that on Google. Let's see it. Start them up. That's something that was nice. No huge plumes of blue smoke or anything. It smells nice as well, oddly. <laughs> I think it's a petrol freak. Now, here's a question for you. What are you running this on? E E5. Top fuel. If I can. <laughs> I wouldn't run my motor on any other, any vehicle I have, I would not run on an E10 crap. I'm getting so many emails now from YouTube, and I am getting them all now, and I know I would. People are dragging their little mopeds out. Mark, and I'm getting a lot. Um, I've got spark, I've got fuel, it won't run properly, it dies on me. E10, and I can't stress enough how bad that fuel is with the ethanol in there. They're going to muck around with the diesel for soon. Instead of B7, I think they're going to B20 or something stupid. And they've got more to do uh, E, whatever it's uh, Just rubbish. Use super. If you're going to have to, which is going to say now occasionally, then put half a tank in if you have to, and then fill up back with E5 Super. It's a must, you have to run these cars. Modern, old, don't use it. Trust me. It was once, I couldn't get an E5 whatsoever, so I ended up putting E10 in it. I didn't put much in it, it didn't like it. It exploded, didn't have power, it was like it was down on power, it was awful. Man, that's not scripted, it is rubbish. And even people say, they use it in their car, you use it continuously, it's harder starting, you do notice less miles to the gallon, and people say it's better on power, it just isn't, it's just rubbish. Right, I think a drive-by is needed, don't you? Yep. Do you want me Go to for the drive-by, what's that? Do you want me to do one normal mode and then power mode, can we see the difference? I think it's got to be! That makes me feel a lot better. I can see that up. <laughs> I can see the bonnet thinking, please don't fly up. <laughs> it's got a nice sound to it. Especially as an auto, it changes lovely, doesn't it? What a very nice, appreciating Toyota MR2 Mark II, 1990. So that's nicely. What do you reckon, Daniel? Nice car? See you later. Yeah, yeah, wait. wait. Uh, no, no, it's not funny. <sighs> well, I've got a long walk home. So I actually did forget to mention the Japanese were very good with like their technology. These uh, fog lights down here, the original like yellow ones that you have in Japan because this is an import. On the switch inside, if you have the switch upwards, they actually are cornering lights. So when you turn, the lights will corner with you. Stuff like that. That was just a technology. But when you put the switch down, it actually just turned into a normal fog light. So with their technologies, quite quite good for back in the day, um, and it's quite impressive as well. But it does annoy some people because if you're at a roundabout, you've got the wheels slightly turned. They only think this yellow bulb is an indicator for some reason. And they'll sit there and they'll just look at you thinking you're turning right or left sometimes. But other than that, the, the technology was brilliant for what they had back in the day. And it proves that they did build quality cars because it's still lasting. It's still original motors in here. I suppose best thing before we go, we're going to have to go for a little drive. Certainly. <laughs> right, auto box, where we go? So this is in normal, normal mode, so it's just like comfort and day to day driving. But it's just nice gear changes. Mind the huge holes in the floor. It's not, doesn't really like bottles, this car. No. 
I would say welcome to Essex Rose when it comes to potholes. <laughs> so the normal mode is just nice comfort, you know, day-to-day -day driving. But when you click the little power button and then you put your foot down, I'll do it when it's clear. So even when you're driving in power, you can still just have that comfort and everything. When you press, when you have that power button on, you can hear the sound as well. Completely different coming through that box down here. Yes, should have told you that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm pointing to him really. It will open up the car and give you all the power it has, really. It really does, doesn't it? And sounds very nice. If I put it back on the menu button, yeah. you put your foot down. Oh yeah, you can hear the difference, can't you? It's the really difference. It doesn't want to give you all that power like it's dropped to gear and you're yeah. downshifting and stuff. While making a blue cup of tea, how many sugars? Uh, two, please. Two? Have you got made of money? <laughs> I usually don't have sugar in tea though, it's just the odd occasion I just have sugar. Alright, oh, okay, I do have a cup of tea. As you say, cat tea all the time. So, he's telling me he's selling the car. So, what break horsepower is in that? It's roughly between 150 and 160. Um, say roughly, because at the end of the day, I do get moaned at this song on YouTube with people that know a lot more about cars than I do. <laughs> but I, mean, I understand there's different versions, and I also understand that being automatic, it can be increased and decreased with yeah. the sports box on there. And MOT? MOT, it's got a couple of months left on it, um, but it when the buyer buys it, if they want to take it as is and they do it, that's perfectly fine. But if they want a new MLT, I'll put a fresh MLT on it because I know it'll go through with flying colours. So the fresh year's MLT on it, paperwork. There's quite, got it. quite a lot of paperwork. I've got a file and it's just full of paperwork going back to when it come into the country and all sorts of thank you. The problem I think nowadays cars, and I like to see paper with cars, is that the more modern car you get, you get nothing. Literally, for main dealers now, because of data protection, you get bugger all. You get literally the handy manual, which means nothing, a folder, luckily you get another key, and then you get the logbook, which you're allowed to have the whole logbook anyway, just get the green stick, you've got to wait. Don't tell your previous owners on that sense now of who they were, all the information is just missing now. And I, I, I really miss that stack of history yeah. that used to have it. It just makes someone cared for it. Yeah, it really does. It's, I've got a load in there, just receipts that I put in there, like brake pads, new bushes, because when I got it, it on the MLT when I checked it. Just to just, just see the bottom of the picture. <laughs> There's Millie! She's happy. I just watched her, which she wasn't so happy about, but she's watched now. So yeah, when I got it, it, I looked at the MLT as you do, and you check it out and stuff, and it had an oil leak, um, the bushes were worn and stuff like that. So, the first thing I did, new stabiliser links, and found that was worn. The bottom ball joints there was worn, and there was a pig to get off. That was. You just mentioned that. Remember, I mentioned this in my last video MOTs now. Literally, I, I think they've all been told to put down ridiculous amounts, like unable to check this. People are failing. A uh, car seat in car, can't check the seat belt to advisory. It's a poxy car seat. Uh, obstruction screen, air freshener. A uh, stone chip, far left hand corner. Not even a bird could see it, but it's there. Um, unable to check brake discs because of plastic in a way. The car's designed that way. Um, brake pipes covered in corrosive material. It's a bit of dirt. They literally put all this stuff on there. So it's having nice green little packs where the DVLA hold the MOT information. It's amber, warning. You know, one of them, I think that discovery I had, had stacked this big. And when you actually looked through it, corrosive, this, that. It's all bollocks and rubbish, really. Right? So, no. And modern cars now are even foul. For three years, they're all gonna foul on a headlight bulb or a side light bulb or window wipers. 
Mm. Got my right. goat there. Right. Moving back to the car. <laughs> so yeah, the, the ball joints were knackered, so whoever MLT did, oh, a, pro- did right. a proper job and went easy on it. So they got replaced, but I'm telling you, I'll never do it again. Yeah. It's meant to be, ask the boss, can I pop out for an hour, use a two pulse around, quickly change the ball joints. Uh, it turned into four hours later, swearing with a big massive bar, trying to crack them out. And I had it in the Fiesta. The little void bush at the back, I forget what you call them there, but it's basically because the Fiesta 13 plate has got just a running arm at the back. And I just thought about it, pop them out, it was so bad. They, what happens, you get a knocking noise, the big suspension, it turns out these tiny little ones. I got it out, oh my God. I didn't bother buying the press or taking it off. I spent three hours greasing it. I built a little cup. I used, tell what I used, you know the extraction for oil? when you use the filters. Yeah. I used two cups and a bowl and I wound it in and broke one and managed to eventually I got one side done. The other side wasn't bad and I thought, you know what, I'm not fucking doing it. <laughs> because it's just bastards to do. And I watched the video and I just cut it out, takes it out, get it clamped, push it in, job done. Yeah. Well when I when I did that one side I was just like, I'm not even touching the other side. I'll do that next week. <laughs> a week off of it and <laughs> I forgot what it was for fucking cut tea. <laughs> Look, that was tea and chat. Alright, here's for sale. Now you've seen it drive up and down. And it's a nice car, if I'm honest with you. If I had a, a want for a two seater car, well, I'd be able to stick a million in, wouldn't I? Look, that mm-hmm. sticker in the boot, could I? The roof does come on. <laughs> some sunglasses on. At the top. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. There you go. Bye. Mark Savage, <laughs> thank you so much. Please like, share, subscribe. Watch his two end videos of him when I picked him up and another one. Take care of yourself. Love you loads. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. A bit of a windy day. What are we looking at today? A very nice MR2. No, fuck it. So we do that. That is mine. <laughs> Stop. Now set. Set. Oh. Anyway, this is his car. Hi, Mark Savage here. I bought another car. <laughs> We'll just go round it.